Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Firebase from Google. We're going to create a database program that uses the Firebase online tool. Firebase is Google's solution for creating applications that require really no back-end configuration on your part, but you have to use the front end mostly. So here's what our app's going to look like. We're going to have a sign-in sheet and then we're going to record what we call heroes. So let's sign in. I'm going to log in with Google as my Google account and then we'll be able to create some heroes. So a hero is somebody that would be maybe a video game character. And so we have no heroes in our list now, but we'll add one here. So I'm gonna call this guy Howard, and I'm going to give him a category of Cyclops. He is going to be a Falconer, and let's give some strength, speed, and his stamina ratings, and he is not a deity. So we create the new hero. And you can see that immediately this database is so responsive it shows us we have one item in our list. And so this is all the heroes in our collection. And in the second line we're going to have a second list of only things that this user account has created. So if you're the only person that ever uses the app, these two lists will be identical. And then if we want to edit it, we can click on edit the hero. We can go back and change a detail or two. And then when we click update, we should see the exact changes immediately. Now let's talk a minute about what Firebase is and why you would want to use it. Firebase is a Google product. It's called a real-time database that automatically lets you use Google authentication, as you just saw. And hosting is completely taken out of your problem list. It's in Google's hands now. And so there's a lot of features that Firebase will do for you. So Firebase will work on many platforms. It'll work on the Android and it'll work on the iOS from Apple and also for web applications. So we're going to focus on the web application development today. A real-time database is something that is put in the cloud and it automatically is updated. Your application is aware of the data that is sent to and from it. So here is an example of what I mean by a real-time database. And so you can see this function that's being pointed out. It is a, um, a listener function. And so anytime there's a value that changes in the database, this function in your code will be fired or it'll be activated. And so you can create an update to your application screen or you can do other actions uh, according to however you want to do it as a programmer. But the, the action is automatically triggered when the database is updated. So storage works a lot like a database when it comes to Firebase. In a database, you simply tell it you want to store a string or a number, and the same goes with storage. It's an online tool, and uh, you can have unlimited storage space for your application. You just have to pay for the gigabytes that your application uses. Here's what storage looks like if you were at the uh, admin console. And so you can see the uploads from an application I created are all listed here. It shows you how much space they take. It looks a lot like Dropbox, and really that's what it looks like to me is a Dropbox interface. Here's what it costs. If you want to start off with uh, Firebase, you can do it for free. And so you can use this tutorial without paying anything to Google. And if you want to create an application that is used in the public, then you start having options as you go. Here's a, a similar kind of a database. It's probably more popular. It's called MongoDB. And when you look at the tables, or you might call them lists of data that's stored in the database, you're going to say, that looks an awful lot like a JSON object, you know, the J uh, JavaScript object notation. And it's, that's, that's all it is, really. It's a, a database that is one big JSON object. And so Mongo and um, Firebase look a lot like that. So here's the Firebase console so you can see this is taken directly from the application we're going to create it shows a, a list of heroes a list of users that are logged in and you can see also it has the uh, attributes of each of these heroes a traditional database creates tables and uh, SQL is the language that is used to query those tables so this is completely different now you're going to learn a whole new strategy so if you've taken a SQL approach to things where you split up tables logically, you can throw pretty much all of the rules out the window that you've learned about having one copy of the data and having joins between tables. In, uh, the, C in the NoSQL databases like Mongo and in Firebase, you're going to have to learn a whole new set of rules. 
why would you uh, want to be using Firebase? It certainly isn't the most popular thing around, but you can see that um, it is growing. So in this graph here from the website called dbengines.com, you can see the plateaus of the three popular guys at the top. We got Oracle, MySQL, and Microsoft Server. And then the others following are picking up the crumbs, you might say. So MongoDB is probably the leading NoSQL database we've got here. But you can see that Firebase is also growing quickly. And it has the support of Google behind it, which makes a big difference in why you would take it seriously or not. Let's take a look at some jobs. Uh, if you were a SQL programmer and you were looking on Indeed.com for a job, you'll see that SQL brings up quite a few jobs. What's it say in the corner here? 1,376 current jobs available. If you look for NoSQL, it's only 80 jobs. And so even though NoSQL databases get all the buzz and all the growth, and this is the new startup model, uh, you can see that there's still a lot more jobs before in the old traditional SQL. MongoDB gets about 67 of those jobs that are NoSQL, and Firebase would only take maybe, what, maybe five or six more. So definitely SQL is still the game in town. It has more flexibility when it comes to complex queries, but you'll see what the advantages are of this type of application once we get going. Okay, so here's some of the code that we're going to be developing. Uh, we're going to create a single web page and it's going to take about 500 lines of code, 450 or so. And it's a lot of HTML. We're also going to use the uh, JavaScript, jQuery, and the Bootstrap CSS files. So nothing to install really. We're going to just have one text file. I'm going to be using the uh, text editor from uh, Microsoft called Code Visual Studio. However, you can use any code editor you like, such as Notepad. Okay, so if you like what you see so far, let's continue on. We're going to create some code with HTML, jQuery, and then we're using the Firebase database.